the celebrated jumping frog of calaveras county in compliance with a request of a friend of mine who wrote me from the east i called on good-natured garrulous old simon wheeler and inquired after my friend's friend leonidas w smiley as requested to do and hereunto append the result i have a lurking suspicion that leonidas w smiley is a myth that my friend never knew such a personage and that he only conjectured that if i asked old wheeler about him it would remind him of his infamous jim smiley and he would go to work and bore me nearly to death with some infernal reminiscence of him as long and tedious as it should be useless to me if that was the design it certainly succeeded i found simon wheeler dozing comfortably by the barroom stove of an old dilapidated tavern in the ancient mining camp of angels and i noticed that he was fat and bald-headed and had an expression of winning gentleness and simplicity upon his tranquil countenance he roused up and gave me good day i told him a friend of mine had commissioned me to make some inquiries about a cherished companion of his boyhood named leonidas w smiley reverend leonidas w smiley a young minister of the gospel who he had heard was at one time a resident of angel's camp i added that if mr wheeler could tell me anything about this reverend leonidas w smiley i would feel under many obligations to him simon wheeler backed me into a corner and blockaded me there with his chair and then sat me down and reeled off the monotonous narrative which follows this paragraph he never smiled he never frowned he never changed his voice from the gentle flowing key to which he tuned the initial sentence he never betrayed the slightest suspicion of enthusiasm but all through the interminable narrative there ran a vein of impressive earnestness and sincerity which showed me plainly that so far from his imagining that there was anything ridiculous or funny about his story he regarded it as a really important matter and admired its two heroes as men of transcendent genius in finesse to me the spectacle of a man drifting serenely along through such a queer yarn without ever smiling was exquisitely absurd as i said before i asked him to tell me what he knew of reverend leonidas w smiley and he replied as follows i let him go on in his own way and never interrupted him once there was a fellow here once by the name of jim smiley in the winter of forty nine or it may be was the spring of fifty i don't recollect exactly somehow though what makes me think it was one or the other is because i remember the big flume wasn't finished when he first came to the camp but anyway he was the curiousest man about always betting on anything that turned up you ever see if he could get anybody to bet on the other side and if he couldn't he changed size anyway that suited the other man would suit him anyway just so as he got a bet he was satisfied but still he was lucky uncommon lucky he most always come out winner he was always ready and laying for a chance there couldn't be no solitary thing mentioned but that feller'd offer to bet on it and take any side you please as i was just telling you and if there was a horse race you'd find him flush or you'd find him busted at the end of it if there was a dog fight he'd bet on it 
If there was a cat fight, he'd bet on it. If there was a chicken fight, he'd bet on it. Why, if there were two birds sitting on a fence, he would bet you which one would fly first. Or if there was a camp meeting, he'd be there regular to bet on Parson Walker, which he judged to be the best exhorter about here. And so he was, too, and a good man. If he even seen a straddle bug start to go anywheres, he would bet you how long it would take him to get wherever he was going to. And if you took him up, he would follow that straddle bug to Mexico, but what he could find out where he was bound for and how long he was on the road. Lots of the boys here have seen that smiley and can tell you about him. Why, it never made no difference to him. He would bet on anything, that dangest feller. Parson Walker's wife laid very sick once for a good while, and it seemed as if there weren't they weren't going to save her. But one morning he come in, Smiley asked how she was, and he said, He was considerable better, thank the Lord for his infinite mercy, coming on so smart that with the blessing of Providence she'd get well yet. And Smiley, before he thought, says, Well, I'll risk two and a half that she don't anyway. This year Smiley had a mare. The boys called her the fifteen-minute nag. But that was only in fun, you know, because, of course, she was faster than that. And he used to win money on that horse. For always she was, she was so slow, always had the asthma or the distemper or the consumption or something of that kind. They used to give her two or three hundred yards start and then pass her under way, but Always at the fag end of the race, she'd get excited and desperate-like, and come cavorting and straddling up, and scattering her legs around limber, sometimes in the air, sometimes out to one side amongst the fences, and kicking up more dust and raising more racket with her coughing and sneezing and blowing her nose, and always fetch up at the stand just about a neck ahead, as near as you could cipher it down. He had a little small bull pup. But to look at him, you'd think he wasn't worth a cent. But to sit around and look ornery and lay for a chance to steal something. But as soon as the money was up on him, he was a different dog. His under jaw began to stick out like a forecastle of a steamboat. And his teeth would uncover and shine savage like the furnaces. And the dog might tackle him and bully-rag him and bite him and throw him over his shoulder two or three times. And Andrew Jackson, which was the name of the pup, Andrew Jackson would never let on but what was satisfied and hadn't expected nothing else. And the bets being doubled and doubled on the other side all the time. till the money was all up and then all of a sudden he would grab that other dog just by the joint of his hind leg and freeze on it. Not chew, you understand, but only just grip and hang on till they throwed in the sponge. If it was a year. Smiley always come out winter on that pup till he harnessed a dog once that didn't have no hind legs because they'd been sawed off by a circular saw. And when the thing had gone along far enough and the money was all up and he come to make a snatch for his pet bolt. He saw in a minute how he'd been imposed on, and how the other dog had him in the door, so to speak, and he appeared surprised. And then he looked sort of discouraged-like, and didn't try no more to win the fight. So he got shucked out bad. He gave Smiley a look as much to say his heart was broke, and it was his fault for putting up a dog that had no hind legs for him to take hold of, which was his main dependence in a fight. And then he limped off a piece and laid down and died. It was a good pup, it was that Andrew Jackson, and would have made a name for himself if he'd lived, for the stuff was in him. And he had genius, I know it, because 
he had no opportunities to speak of, and I don't, and it don't stand to reason that a dog would make such a fight as he could under them circumstances if he had no talent. It always makes me feel sorry when I think of that last fight of his and the way it turned out. Well, this year Smiley had rat tatters and chicken cocks and tomcats and all them kinds of things till you couldn't rest and you couldn't fetch anything for him to bet on, but he'd match you. He catched a frog one day and took him home and said he'd calculated to educate him and so he never done nothing for three months but set in his back yard and learn that frog to jump. And you bet he did learn him, too. He'd give him a little punch behind, and the next minute you'd see that frog whirling in the air like a doughnut. See him turn one somerset or maybe a couple. If he got a good start and come down flat-footed and all right, like a cat, he got him up so in the matter of catching flies and kept him in practice so constant that he'd nail a fly every time as far as he could see him. Smiley said all a frog wanted was education. They could do most anything, and I believe him. Why, I've seen him set Daniel Webster down there on the floor. Daniel Webster was the name of the frog. And sing out, Flies, Dan'l, flies. And quicker than you can wink, he'd spring straight up and snake a fly off on the counter there and flop down on the floor again as solid as a gob of mud and fall to scratching the side of his head with his hind foot as indifferent as if had no idea he'd been doing anything more than any frog might do. You never see a frog so modest and straightforward as he was for all he was so gifted. And when it come down fair and square jumping on a dead level, he could get over more ground at one straddle than any animal of his breed you ever see. Jumping on a dead level was his strong suit, you understand. And when it come to that, Smiley would ante up money on him as long as he had a red. Smiley was monstrous proud of his frog, and well he might be, for fellers had traveled and been everywhere as all said he laid over any frog they ever see. Well, Smiley kept the beast in a little lattice box, and he used to fetch him downtown sometimes and lay for a bet. One day a feller, a stranger in camp, he was come across him with his box, and he says, What might be in that box you've got? And Smiley says, sort of indifferent-like, It might be a parrot, or it might be a canary, maybe, but it ain't. It's only a frog. And the feller took it and looked at it careful and turned it round this way and that and says, Mmm, so tis. Well, what's he good for? Well, Smiley says, easy and careless. He's good enough for one thing, I should judge. He can out-jump any frog in Calveras County. The feller took the box again and took another long, particular look and give it back to Smiley and says, very deliberate, Well, I don't see no points about that frog that's any better than any other frog. Maybe you don't, Smiley says. Maybe you understand frogs, and maybe you don't understand them. Maybe you've had experience, and maybe you ain't only an amateur, as it were. Anyways, I've got my opinion, and I'll risk forty dollars that he can out-jump any frog in Calveras County. The feller studied a minute, and then says, kind of sad-like, well, I'm only a stranger here, and I ain't got no frog. But if I had a frog, I'd bet you. And Smiley says, That's all right, that's all right. If you'll hold my box a minute, I'll go and get you a frog. And so the feller took the box and put up his forty dollars along with Smiley's and sat down to wait. 
So he sat there a good while, thinking and thinking to himself, and then he got the frog out and prized his mouth open and took a teaspoon and filled him full of quail shot, pretty, pretty nearly up to his chin, and set him on the floor. Smiley went to the swamp and slopped around in the mud for a long time, and finally he catched the frog and fetched him and give him to this feller and says, Now if you're ready, set him alongside Daniel with his forepaws just even with Daniel, and I'll give the word. Then he says, One, two, three, jump. And him and the feller touched up the frogs from behind, and the new frog hopped off, but Daniel give a heave and a hoisted up his shoulders, so like a Frenchman, but it wa'n't no use. He couldn't budge. He was planted as solid as an anvil, and he couldn't get more stir than he was anchored out. Smiley was a good deal surprised, and he was disgusted, too. But he didn't have no idea what the matter was, of course. The feller took the money and started away, and when he was going out the door, he sort of jerked his thumb over his shoulders this way that Daniel and says again, very deliberate, Well, I don't see no points about that frog that's any better than any other frog. Smiley, he stood scratching his head and looking down at Daniel a long time, and at last he says, I do wonder what in the nation that frog throwed off for. I wonder if there ain't something the matter with him. He appears to look mighty baggy somehow. And he catched Daniel by the nap of the neck and lifted him up and says, Well, blame my cats if he don't weigh five pound. Turned him upside down and he belched out a double handful of shot. And then he sees how it was. He was the maddest man. He set the frog down and took out after that feller, but he never catched him. And, well, here Simon Wheeler heard his name called from the front yard, and he got up to see what was wanted, and turned to me as he moved away, and he said, You just set where you are, stranger, and rest easy. I ain't going to be gone a second. But by your leave, I did not think that a continuation of the history of the enterprising vagabond Jim Smiley would be likely to afford me much information concerning the Reverend Leonidas W. Smiley, and so I started away. At the door I met the sociable Wheeler returning, and he buttonholed me and recommenced. Well, this year Smiley had a yeller one-eyed cow that didn't have no tail, only just a short stump like a banana, and Oh, hang Smiley and his afflicted cow, I muttered good-naturedly, and bidding the old gentleman good day, I departed. <laughs>